the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside CenturyLink Field here in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Play action. Now it's Rodgers. Man open. That's Marquez Valdez-Scantling. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. That opening drive rhythm continues right into play number three. Whatever they decided that they wanted to run before the game, it's working pretty well for them right now. Moving the ball downfield at a nice rate. And guess what? I think the chain crew might have to get a little oxygen over there. <laughs> they have to keep moving downfield with first downs on each play. Now a play fake here on first down. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. So after the sack here, second and 14. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. 319! 319! Working from the gun, Rodgers. And Graham's got it, complete. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Two former All-Pros connecting. Rodgers fighting his tight end, Graham. Packer first down. First carry now for the BYU man, it's Jamal Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Now they're coming up on play number eight of this opening drive, but they're looking at a third and long. 
Shotgun now for Rodgers. Touchdown, Packers! Jimmy Graham, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Packers take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. Aaron Rodgers no longer has a safety blanket named Jordy Nelson to utilize in the red zone anymore. But picking up Jimmy Graham, that's a heck of a consolation prize. Remember, Jimmy Graham has had four seasons of 10 touchdowns or more, including 10 with the Seahawks in 2017. Extra point up and good by Crosby, and that makes the score 7-0. Crosby on now to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Charles, I want you to analyze the Seahawks playoff chances here as they come out for this next drive. Look, I think it's safe to say they're not going to catch the Rams. They're not going to win the division, but how about their playoff hopes as far as a wild card goes? But they're going to need some help along the way, I think from other teams, other divisions, but it's not lost yet. Russell Wilson gives you an opportunity every time you take the field. The offensive line playing way better than expected. They're running the football like the Seahawks of old, led by Chris Carson. And that defense, not a lot of recognizable names, but playing at a pretty decent level, somewhat what we suspected in preseason, that Pete Carroll was excited about having a bunch of no names that maybe he can mold again. And I think that's what we're seeing with Seattle. Right now, tracking towards being a 500 team, but they can put together a three-game winning streak somewhere, they could have a shot at it. And if you're looking at the end of the season, great news for the Seahawks, four of their last five games at home. This is Carson. Seven yards on the carry, make it third and four coming up. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing, often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. From the shotgun, Wilson. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. That's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Green Bay Packers getting the ball back here, but I wanted to ask you to kind of assess 2018 for them because you think back to the midway point, they're under 500. Even some of their wins have been, I don't know if you want to call it a little uninspiring, but what do you make of their season? Good word, because Chicago had to come back, and that was Aaron Rodgers coming back from injury in that game to win that one on opening night. San Francisco at home on a Monday night game. Everybody thought they'd blow them away, and they really struggled in that one. But the better teams that they've played, they've played them very tough, been very competitive, haven't been able to get over the hump against them. Here's the question, though. Are they wasting number 12's best years? Talk about Aaron Rodgers. Do they have the right personnel around him? They drafted three rookie receivers this year, waiting for them to make an impact to try and supplant or supplement the guys they already have. They need those guys to get going and in a hurry. On second down, Williams. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a yard in the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. These two teams met in week one a year ago, and that one that went to the Packers in a slugfest 17-9. Now, remember, they also met in the no, NFC no, title no. game of the 2014 season. It was the Seahawks who prevailed their 28-22 on a Jermaine Kirsch touchdown catch in overtime. Rodgers going to try and throw on third down. And able to find Graham, complete. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And 18. 
On first and ten, here's Rodgers. And they can't bring him down. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. Rodgers now on first down. And he finds his tight end, Graham. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drills, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down, here's Rodgers. And Graham's got it over the middle. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A very solid gain of 27. They've looked his way quite a bit, and in my estimation, as well they should. Well, that's now five catches in this first half alone. And he picks up another first down. He's been an important part of their offense here early. Rodgers now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. On the counter, here's Williams. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Rodgers to throw on second down. And this will be incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. And it's third down. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. On third and long, it's Rodgers. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So on now for the Packers is their all-time leading scorer, Mason Crosby. This one from 35 yards away. And Crosby puts it through, and the lead moves to 10 zip. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's, some, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Toward the sideline. 
ahead and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback, so they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him, and he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now. For he's got it at the 15. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, in the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly, and now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll bring up a second and goal. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he's got it. Caught in the end zone for the Seahawk touchdown. And Dixon from six yards away. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. Sebastian Janikowski on for the PAT. Janikowski good with the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10-7. to kick is Janikowski. This is taken at his four. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side, Maybe a little gas, yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field and getting up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. I'm going to switch gears, Charles, and get your favorite play of the year so far. Look, I, I know we don't have a Minnesota miracle like we saw at the end of last season, but what's been the one that's caught your attention the most? Well, wouldn't Linval Joseph picking up a fumble against Philadelphia and bringing it all the way back uh, count as yeah. a Minnesota miracle? That was the earth shaker. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot of man carrying the football, and he got all the way to the end zone. Oxygen, oxygen. <laughs> what a great play there. How about Graham Gano finishing off? The New York Giants with a 63-yard field goal at the buzzer for Carolina. That was spectacular. I thought the triple reverse by Carolina against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was something that Curtis Samuel, how far did he run? 160 yards yeah. or so in order to make that play work? Ends up as a touchdown. And just because we have to say Patrick Mahomes, it's a left-handed pass. And he lost the football. And his guys are going to get the football at the 
seven yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Here's Wilson to throw, and Daniels has it over the middle, and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on catching the ball and not much run after the catch. On third down, that's Carson. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. What? What? Running. running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And he'll be dropped at the 23 after a pickup of about four. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Go, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They run it with Carson. And a short gain here down to the 22. Kenny Clark, the big D tackle there to make the stop. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. From the gun on third down, Wilson. And he's got room. He'll have a first down inside the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Three, five, move the team. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Try to drop one in, but it's incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin, and it's third down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Now this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions, but they need seven yards here. Movement there on the offensive line, a little quick, and a five-yard penalty. That's going to set them back five yards. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. From the gun, it's Wilson. His pass caught at the four. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Janikowski 
Gronkowski bangs it through, and that will knot us up at 10. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Make sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when okay. they only gave up the field yeah. goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punching the end zone without turning it over. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, Charles, we got a second here. Let's do an MVP check-in right now at this point in the season. Is Patrick Mahomes your headliner? He is for me uh, look second year playing one start as a rookie and what he's done so far it's been absolutely spectacular magnificent consistency has had any real dips now before the season you know i was focused in on todd Gurley, and he continues to power the rams attack he has to be in the conversation drew Brees. How many completions does he throw per game? One or two? It's unbelievable with his accuracy. Tom Brady is still Tom Brady and wins big games. Phillip Rivers with a strong second half could get into the conversation, but keep a real eye on the NFC South. Matt Ryan ahead of his MVP pace of 2016. Cam Newton and Carolina, if they end up winning that division, you better take a hard look at him. Throwing now is Rodgers. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Adams. 12 more yards there and another first down. That's fine. Rodgers now 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. A give to Jones. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Looking to throw on second down. Rodgers. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Graham. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. The Packers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. 319! 319! From the gun, it's Rodgers. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back. But that's one step in the proper direction. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. He cannot wiggle free. They stop him at the line on fourth down. It was Jaron Reed who got him down. Well, you know, we've got a pretty big sample size now from the NFL season, Charles. I want to ask you, going back to the draft, who was the biggest steal in 2018? Well, the biggest steal is Phil Lindsay. Oh, guy that wasn't even drafted. Wasn't even drafted. But how about what the Denver personnel department did, identifying him ahead of time, potentially not being drafted and ready to pounce when the call didn't come for him. And what a job he's done for them, running it, catching it, open field guy, in traffic, he's done it all. I think Saquon Barkley from the Giants has been everything 
as advertised. Calvin Ridley with Atlanta has been spectacular. Quentin Nelson, offensive guard with the Colts. He was rookie of the month, wasn't he? Yeah, back in October. How about that? Yeah, how about that for an offensive lineman? We've had four quarterbacks start games, Mayfield, Darnold, Allen, and Rosen. And Quentin Nelson, one final note on that. He was the first offensive lineman ever given that award, so hats off to him. Definitely. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. Here it's third and two. Here's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Rodgers going to throw. Got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw, it's Rodgers. This is Cobb with a catch right side. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Rodgers to Cobb, good for a Green Bay first. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Bringing him to the ground defensively, Tedrick Thompson. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Rodgers looking to throw on second down. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him, they've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. The Packers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked, instead it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. On fourth down, J.K. Scott ready to punt it away. Back deep, the dangerous Tyler Lockett. The Seahawks offense now. They get set to go back to work. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. 
Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now it's Wilson. It's caught on the left side by Baldwin. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. On second down, Wilson. He hits Baldwin right side. That catch good for five. It's third down. And the Seahawks on third down. Two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. From the shotgun, Wilson. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they were unsuccessful. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. <laughs> oh, spinning away. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt. Three on the return, and it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And now the Packers get set to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach. Can you hang in there and not try and force something that can put your team in some jeopardy? Looking left sideline, it's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Now Rodgers. This is intercepted. Picked up by Brad McDougal. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. Well, Charles, the uh, trade deadline obviously is now passed. So you look back at the number of guys that went different places. Wh which trade caught your eye the most? Well, there are a few of them, and they all had one thing in common as far as I could tell. They're all made with the idea of that team winning big this year. Mm. Ha Ha Clinton Dix from Green Bay to Washington. Washington in first place at the time when they make the trade. They're thinking about winning their division and advancing in the playoffs, getting more help in the secondary. How about Golden Tate going from Detroit to Philadelphia? The Eagles trying to defend their Super Bowl championship, adding a receiver for Carson Wentz. Eli Apple from the Giants to New Orleans. They're thinking about not just defending the NFC South, but maybe having to play the LA Rams again in the playoffs with another corner. And Amari Cooper going from Oakland to Dallas because Dallas believes if they have a threat out wide, it'll open things up for Ezekiel Elliott and get the Cowboys back on the beam. Yeah, some decent names, some big trades. Looking for Baldwin, intercepted. Picked up by Josh Jackson, and the return stops at the 39-yard line. The CD, as we look forward, get closer and closer to the postseason, what do you think if you had to pick the Super Bowl teams right now, who would you take? Let me start in the NFC, and I think that the Rams and New Orleans seem to have separated a little bit right now. They seem to be the prime two teams. But I'm looking in the NFC South, and the Carolina Panthers would scare the heck out of me if I were anyone in the NFC. Defense continues to get better. Cam Newton having his best season since his MVP year of 2015. Versatile weapons on offense now. I like the momentum that they've been building. On the AFC side, of course, you have to say New England until further notice, naturally. You have to say Kansas City. But I do think that Houston has really built something because of their defense especially. But bottom line for me, the Los Angeles Chargers Ooh. are really starting to make a move with Phillip Rivers leading them. Yeah, all the talk about the Chiefs, but the Chargers right there. Blue 58! 
On first and ten, here's Rodgers. It's a loss of eight right, there on the on. first down play. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Shot before half for Rodgers. A dump underneath to Jones. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports halftime report, here's Jonathan Coachman. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. Second half begins with a run from Penny. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now it's Carson, and forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On third down, Wilson. Completes it to Dixon. He had their lone TD earlier, and now he's got a first down. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. On first down, Wilson. And Dixon over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Operating from the gun, Wilson. This is complete, it's Baldwin. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And a nice gain at 21 yards. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him, I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Come on. On second down, here's Wilson. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Now Wilson from the gun on third down. He's got Lockett. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Nick Perry, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Right, He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. So the false start will back them up five. That penalty against D.J. Fluker, the behemoth out of Alabama. A bad time for a full start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. From the gun, Wilson. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Janikowski bangs it through, and they will take the lead at 13 to 10. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right, no big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because bre you break chestnuts? I I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Now, after the made field goal, here's Sebastian Janikowski to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. But sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Frank Clark in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. 
Throws right side, and that's complete. That'll put him at 95 receiving yards now as he's got a first down. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. And nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Rodgers now on first down. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. That's fine. Yeah. So the offense a little antsy. The flag comes out and a five-yard penalty. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. The false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Shotgun now for Rodgers toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The linebacker, Bobby Wagner, able to get back in coverage and knock it free. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes, even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. Big play coming up. Here's third and 10. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. He sets up the screen to Jones. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. On the game. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete a partner with that incompletion what do you say that we look around the league and give some defensive players some love you okay with that let's do it let's rattle off a few guys von miller every year we talk about him we should do it again he's again one of the top sack leaders in the nfl one name you don't talk about but should is Daniel Hunter with the Minnesota Vikings, really coming into his own as a pass rusher. Aaron Donald, I think he's worth every nickel the LA Rams have spent. Strong favorites in the NFC West. JJ. And now off to the races, down the right side. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Rashad Penny, 74 yards. And the Seahawks add on to their lead. Janikowski now for the point after. Janikowski adds the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. to kick is Janikowski. 
fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. What can't Aaron Rodgers do? The legwork there getting him the first. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tuck it in run time, and he picks up a first down. Throwing on first down is Rodgers. His throw incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, oftentimes when we get a chance to talk league-wide, we, we go offensive. We don't get a lot of defensive talk. But let's talk about some young rookies. I know you've told me Darius Leonard of the Colts has really impressed you. He certainly has. He's impressed the entire league. I mean, at times, he approaches 20 tackles a game. Sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone, out of South Carolina State. Mm. So you don't think about him, but you should. Derwin James with the Chargers, been as good as advertised at the safety position. Jair Alexander, the corner from Green Bay, missed a couple of games early in the season, but he got the attention of the New England Patriots brass before they played. They were really impressed with him. But Bradley Chubb is doing exactly what we thought he would do, chasing down quarterbacks. And Dante Action Jackson, out of LSU with Carolina, really knows how to ball hawk and take the ball out of the air and take it the other way. Well, you were ready for that. That's a good list of defensive rookies right there. Here's Jones, and he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Again, it's Jones, and he's going to get this one down to the 30. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And a great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. Just a gain of a couple, but good enough to keep the drive rolling. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Now they'll throw with Rodgers. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. The Packers on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for 10. This is going to be third and 13. Working from the gun. Rodgers drops it to Jones in the flat. 
And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. But he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And Crosby puts it through, and that will tighten this one up a bit. Now a one-score game at 20 to 13. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. We got three, we got three, 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 three. On third down, that's Carson. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Hasn't had his best game running the football here tonight, but hey, that's a critical spot right there to convert on third down, and he did it. And the lights are shining just a little bit brighter right now, aren't they? You remember the beginning of the game? If he gets this first down, everybody's happy. That's cool. But here, that was critical, and it really energizes him. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Penny, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Well, that's the big drawback to this play. Even if somehow the quarterback pitches it, he's not immune to the big hit. In this case, he kept it and absorbed it anyway. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit on half of them. Five for 10. This is third and 14. They go play action with Wilson. To lock it with a grab over the middle. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. And a big third down conversion with a gain of 28. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. Tight. Book 15. Here's Carson. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Oh, 
it. From the gun, it's Wilson. Dumps that off to Penny, is running back. Nothing on that one. It'll be second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Keep working, baby. Keep working, fellas. Cut. Right. Green 80. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Josh Jackson, the former Iowa Hawkeye, made the play defensively. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Third and long, it's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to make it third down and 10. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word, put it. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Tremont Williams. And it's a good return here as he'll get all the way up close to the 35. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. On second down, here's Rodgers. Now they go screen, it's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. On first down, Rodgers got an open man. It's Valdez Scantling, and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back 11-yard -back gains, and they've got another first down. When we see another great performance like this out of Aaron Rodgers, you have to chuckle thinking that his only FBS offer was a walk-on at Illinois. And now he's the pride of Butte Junior College, of course at Cal. And I remember watching him play at Cal, and he would run seven-on-seven seven drills. Angry if the ball ever hit the ground, and didn't do it very often. That's complete to Cal. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, it's Jones. And he'll get 
get three down to the 34-yard line. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. The battle in the trenches is never more important than right now. This is third and inches. They'll go again to Jones. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And a loss of three to bring up fourth. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run it with Jones. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. So he needed the short yard as Charles, he elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third, unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want to go to where they think there's more open territory instead of going where the play was actually blocked. In any case, it didn't work here. Here's a handoff to Carson to begin the drive. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is... Do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And he'll push this forward only to about the 42-yard line. And now the Packers going to take another timeout as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Here's Wilson. And some room to maneuver. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. They run again with Carson. Might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. The gain of a yard gets them back where they started. Now it's third and 10. 
I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying it around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.